The key physical principle contained in our mathematical model is conservation, specifically conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. We can quite readily check conservation of mass and conservation of energy in aggregate, and I'll show you how to do that. One should also check conservation of mass. However, you know, that's, uh, there's not an automated way to do that within, within the tool. So I won't do that here, but uh, recognize that that's also an important check to do. Um, and if I go to my uh, a previous slide that I showed listing all the governing uh, equations, and if you look at conservation of mass, okay, if I had the exact solution, del dot rho v equal, will be equal to zero because now I have the velocity field and the density field, but I don't have the exact solution. I have an approximate solution. So del dot rho v will be approximately equal to zero, which means that any vanishingly small chunk of fluid, its mass, you know, any changes will be will be small. And I can also check. So that's uh, you, you know, we don't we don't check that here. What we do is we check mass conservation aggregate because if the differential form of mass conservation is satisfied, the integral form also should be satisfied. And the integral form, you know, means, uh, implies that the m dot in should be equal to m dot out. So let's check that. So I'll, I'll go into uh, the solver. I was playing around with this. So I'll go to mass flow rate and go to the point that we were at previously. Okay, so this is under reports fluxes, mass flow rate, of the inlet. That's m dot n. And for the heck of it, let me just select all the boundaries and say compute. And I see that, you know, so this is my m dot in and this is m dot out. And uh, comfortingly, there is no mass crossing, you know, the unheated part of the wall or the, the, the heated part of the wall. And m dot in minus m dot out um, is approximate, you know, is very low. It's, uh, what is it? It's like nine orders of magnitude lower than the mass flow rate coming in. So we have mass um, conservation in aggregate to, to a high degree of accuracy. And like I mentioned, this doesn't mean that del dot rho v is equal to zero. So this is a necessary check, um, but you know, it, it doesn't mean we have the exact solution. And similarly, one can check if the energy is conserved. So I'll go to total heat transfer rate. And again, so I'll, and I'll say compute. So this is, so if I look at heated section, so that's Q dot in the total, you know, heat flow rate. Um, coming in, and that should be, you know, you can check that that's equal to the amount of heat we are putting in, and this is from the experiment, times 2 pi r times the length of the heated section. Okay, that's the area over which we are inputting the, the heat flux. Um, so this is heat flow per unit area, and then that's the area, and that'll give me the total heat flow or heat flow rate. And this is Q dot out of the of the outlet and you know the insulated part, um, there's nothing coming out of that, which which is again great. And again you can see that it's uh, Q dot in minus Q dot out um, balances to a very you know high uh, degree of, of precision. So again energy is being conserved in, in aggregate to, um, to to quite a high level of accuracy. The other way to check energy conservation is to check if the uh, the mixed mean temperature increases linearly in the in the heated section and I have another video that shows you that. And if I go back to my slide, okay, so conservation is being conservation of mass and conservation of en energy are being satisfied in aggregate. That's comforting. And doesn't mean we have the exact solution, but it doesn't mean, you know, it means that we don't have a totally wrong solution. What about this, this relation? You know, I'll show you, there's a quick way you can check that. Um, so if I go into the post processor 
And let me zoom out here. And if I go to the inlet area and I probe, let's say um, the temperature. Okay, that's a temperature. And similarly, I can probe the density um, at that location by changing this. And so I have row one, T one. Now I can go to the outlet um, and get row two, T two. Okay, this is at the outlet. And then um, if the ideal gas law is being satisfied, um, or our, you know, our approximate ideal gas law, it means that rho 1 T1 should be equal to rho 2 T2. So what I did was I said my, my rho 2 expected is going to be rho 1 T1 over T2. All these values I got by probing, and then I, I can see what rho 2 I expect and then I can compare it to what I got from the probe and they were, they were very close. Um, and so that's, that's a check on the ideal gas law. And the other thing that's interesting to check is, you know, you can also check VZ1. In fact, we did that for checking the boundary conditions and at the outlet, you can get VZ2. And it, this means that rho one, so mass conservation means that rho one vz1 a a is constant is rho 2 vz2 a so a cancels out which means because of the density decreasing um i have the i my velocity should increase and you can you can check that if if that's um that's satisfied um so that's that shows you the coupling of the the um the ideal gas law to to the mass conservation. So that shows you, you know, some of the um, verification checks that you can do uh, for checking if we put in the right mathematical model into the tool, and um, and and if the the solution is honoring, you know, the physical principles in the mathematical model. Next, take a let's let's take a look at the uh, the numerical errors uh, and if those are acceptable.